So yeah, I got these glasses. Check these out, guys. What do you think? Should I do the video? Should I do the video like this? Do it with the Master Tech glasses. I guess yeah. I actually see pretty good in these. All right, what let's roll think? it. All right, let's do it. All right, cut it. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dan from O'Neill Brothers Racing, and today we're going to do a video about our WT1242. We've seen online that there's been some misinformation between the difference between our 1242 and WT990. So we're going to show a video to clear up some of that. We're also going to show you our new power stack. So let's get serious. So today I got the WT990 right here and our WT1242. Now they are WT style carbs, so they obviously look pretty similar to each other, but they're far from being the same. So I'm going to go ahead and break down the WT990 for you and just kind of show you what, what most guys have been running for the past few years. So it's your basic design. It has the regular uh, paper diaphragm on the outside. Um, same top, same primer bulb that we all have known for a long time, same plate. And we're going to go ahead and break this down real quick, okay? So it's really easy. Take a Phillips screwdriver and just go ahead and take off the top. All right. So as we take off the top, you can tell we were still running the normal uh, white top. Those are all pretty uh, standard for a primer bulb WT style carburetor. Um, this is just their basic primer bulb. Um, they do last for a little while, but the ethanol and the fuel does make them crack over time um, and then they're just basic primer ball plate as you can see we have your their standard diaphragm it's a paper diaphragm what this does is as your engine cycles this pulses up and down like see if I can show you guys this kind of pulses up and down and this button right here presses on this lever which opens up this plunger if you guys can see that and that's what how your fuel comes into the carb into, into the bore of the carburetor that's why they call them pulse carbs so as they're as the engine cycles this diaphragm hits that opens up the plunger and very rapidly and allows gas to come into your engine so this has your standard um, spring in it uh, in the video we'll show you the pop-off of where this actually releases the fuel but you can see that this levering is pretty flat you have your basic bar and your plunger inside okay now we're gonna move on to the 1242 there's a lot more goodies going on here obviously you can see that our primer bulb is black okay the primer bulb is ethanol resistant so if you guys are running pump gas um, this won't this won't affect it so one thing I do want to clear up in this, uh, this, this carburetor doesn't just run on pump gas. You can run 100 octane, 110, Q16. You can even run methanol in this thing. Um, so it, the guys that are thinking that this is only a 91 to 93 octane carburetor, definitely not. Uh, you can definitely run higher octane. I have done it. Um, I run 100 octane with this carburetor personally on my off-road cars and it runs really good. So I'm going to go ahead and start breaking this down and start showing you the goodies on the inside. Now when we designed this carburetor with Walbro they really suggested doing all these external goodies. We were more concentrated on doing the internal stuff so um, it was kind of a collaboration on this carburetor as far as debuting what they had externally to upgrade and what we wanted performance wise out of the carburetor. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart we're going to start with the top and now you can see you know obviously we have the ethanol resistant primer bulb and you can see the difference right here they're just really the same bulb just made out of two different materials okay and that just gives you more longevity of the carburetor now you can see the plates this is their standard plate. This is their heavy duty plate. You can see that this is obviously more surface area that's sealing that primer ball plate down. Um, you know, is it a huge upgrade? No, but every little bit counts. 
So they have the new HD, what they call the heavy duty primer ball plate compared to the standard WT990 plate. Now we're gonna start getting a little more internal. You can see that this is made out of Teflon. This is not paper like this. So this seals really well and you can tell, you can see that this diaphragm is actually spiraled and it's made out of metal. I'm gonna take this apart really easy because there is a membrane on this, which is really tiny. Yeah, I probably can't see that, but that's its membrane. And then here's the spiral diaphragm. Now these have been out for a little while, and what it does is over time, these, these paper diaphragms, they can rip and tear. They can also stretch, okay, which causes inconsistency in the fuel delivery. These steel ones, they don't wear out. They are really tough. They can take a lot of abuse, a lot of runtime without them going out. And that was the whole purpose of it. This, this carburetor was meant to last longer on top of have better performance. So here's the spiral diaphragm. Walbro did a video about these already. They're not too new, but they are standard on our 1242 car. So now we're gonna get a little more in depth. This is the changes we wanted to make. If you look on the inside, you can tell this levering is different. Okay, now that's partly because of the spiral diaphragm and partly because of the pop-off spring that we're running in this carburetor. This carburetor produces more fuel at a lower RPM. So we have a softer, we have a softer spring in here and also a different plunger. So it's allowing more fuel to come in at a sooner RPM. That is a performance change between the two and in the video you will see the pop-off pressure that will tell you the difference between these two we also I don't have one right now but we're also going to start offering our board version of this where we go ahead and uh, go ahead and machine this Venturi for better airflow to work with our power stack now this is a new product that uh, we just came out with a couple weeks ago um, you know, a lot of guys were like, hey, you know, what's the difference between this stack and this stack? Now, I'll tell you from my experience, stacks don't always make a huge difference. They're small gains, and but we wanted something to, to pair with our carburetor, with our engines. We wanted our own stack. We went through many different developments, different, different sizes, different tapers, different bores, um, different V-stacks, and we came up with this one. This one did the best on the dyno, um, and our graphs is online. You can tell it's a horn-style carburetor. And it's designed to where, where you put it on any kind of foam filter, clamp on filter, that your horn will never stick out farther than the rubber. So if say your filter takes a smash from the side, it will not block this. It will always stay open. You can tell, it's really hard to see in the video that this opening is a little bit bigger than this opening. And what that does is as the engine cycles, it creates a dead spot in the, in the intake track. Having this taper in the bore gives us better pressurization through the case and through the pulse of the engine. So, in simple terms, when you get off the throttle and you get back on the throttle, this helps with that response. There's no lag. And, it, and especially with like piston port style engines that have that lag, um, this helps. Um, it also helps with the reads. It just gives it even more response, even more pick. The other thing we did is we didn't add a boss to this, okay? We wanted it flat and we added these barbed fittings and they're pretty sharp. So whoever picks this up, definitely watch this. We wanted to make sure that when you clamp your filter on that this thing locks in. It's, you know, the biggest killer engines that we've seen is dirt. And most of the time it's either from not oiling your filter or from the filters just simply falling off because of the oil around the diameter of this V stack. So these bar fittings are meant to lock the filter in and seal it up. So, and also without having this boss, we're allowed to pull the filter in closer. So the guys that are running low C5Bs or low C5Ts that are running reeds and the filter is really stuck out onto the cage, this just allows that filter to stick on just a little bit farther for better clearance. So we had the racers in mind for this and we also had performance in mind. So together, these two work very well together. I hope this clears up some things about the WT1242 against the WT990. This Carbro is made at Walbro. We don't make them here. We order them from Walbro. They come pre-built, preset, exactly the way we want them. And they've been winning races. 
and winning the hearts all over the time, all over the field. So if you have any questions, always feel free to call us at O'Neill Brothers Racing at 310-787-7223, or you can email us at info at O'Neill Brothers Racing for any questions about our products, no matter how in depth, we'll, we'll help you. I hope this clears the air, and you guys, I'll see you at the track. Thanks. Okay, we have our pop-off pressure gauge here, and we are going to test the pop-off on this stock WT990 carburetor. Ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. We're at thirty. So we popped about thirty-five. You see the needle down here, and our gauge only goes to thirty. So we indicate in between the two dots thirty-five psi. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and test our WT1242 carburetor. Pop off. Same thing, we're going to hold it straight up and down. Watch the gauge, watch the car. 5, 10, a little over 15, 20. 25. So we're roughly around 23 to 25 psi. Let's do that one more time. Release the pressure. 5, 10, 15, about 17, 20. Here we go. We're at the 23 mark. 25. So you can see that the 990 carburetor has a way higher pop-off than our WT1242. That right there tells you that this carburetor is delivering more fuel at a lower RPM, thus giving us the fuel delivery that we need for the more modified carburetors.